Ahoy and welcome to this narrowboat adventure. I'm here again with the lovely Kate Saffin to speak to her about her play based on basically the history that we spoke about in the last episode. So if you want, I'll leave a link at the end for the, for the previous episode. Uh, so Kate, why don't you tell us a little bit about your play? And we're drinking tea again. Like yes. Tea. Very important tea on boats. Very important. My play's called Isabel's War. It's part of a double bill. The actual show, which we're touring, this summer is called Idle Women of the Wartime Waterways. It's, it, that's a double bill, so it, half of it is Isabel's War, which is a solo play, which I'll talk about in a bit in a minute, and then the other half, Idle Women and Judies, began as uh, an audio piece. It was commissioned by CRT to make use of some of the incredible amount of oral history and audio material they've got. So she used some of the, the recordings by women who worked on the boats, and the Judies bit comes from the fact that there are some recordings of a woman called Nancy who worked on the Leeds and Liverpool. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just women who worked in the South. They worked on these, I think I mentioned them in the last programme, they worked on these great big barges. And Heather built this lovely piece which mixes poetry and the, the recordings. And so that was the starting point of hers. And then when we decided we put them together, because uh, that's quite, I think it's about eight or nine minutes long, she then started writing new material. So, although we call her half of the show Idle Women and Jude, it's actually it's a whole collection of, of poems and some songs, one of which the audience gets to join in. But coming back to Isabel, uh, I first encountered the, the stories and read the books probably quite soon after I moved on to the boat, which was 1999. And then the idea of doing a play about the trainees was in my mind for some years. I did adaptation pieces of Ramlin Rose, The Boatman's Story by Sheila Stewart. Uh, I wrote a play about two women, it's apparently true, two women who ran a, boat, a brothel on a boat near Oxford after the war, or possibly during the 50s. Um, that was quite fun. Anyway, eventually in 2009, I, I'd been mulling this idea over and, uh, and I was at a phone festival. I was, I was sitting at a concert in Banbury and suddenly the, I kind of got the idea of how to put it all together. So it's framed around, Isabel's fictional, but she tells the stories of, of things that happened. And so it's framed around um, a woman of about my age who's clearing out her mother's attic and finds a diary. Now initially I thought that was a little bit of a device to, to find a diary, because why wouldn't her daughter know about it? But then actually I discovered, well two things happened. One was I met one of the last of the trainees and while she talked about her time on the boat, she also mostly went on to talk about how she then trained as a nurse. So it's easy to think that this experience defined the rest of their lives. And that was true for a few. But of course, they're the ones we see. They're the ones who wrote books. Whereas there were lots who did it for a little while and went off and did something else and probably didn't talk about it very much. Um, well, especially the ones that you mentioned that didn't last. Yes, yeah, I was going to say, especially the ones that hated it and <laughs> ran away. Um, so, so that was reassuring. And then also, just about the time I finished it, in fact, um, uh, one of the, the trainees died and her grandson found a diary that nobody knew about. So even now, you know, these, these accounts are still, still appearing. So that's, that's it in a nutshell, really. Isabel's fictional, but she... she collects all these stories and, and tells them and it, it's a coming of age story really I've set her as a young woman who's a little a rather domineering mother and uh, doesn't get you know she it's for her it's a real opportunity to get out there and do something different and prove herself and how long did you actually take would you say to devise the show that's an awfully good question uh, I think probably the, the uh, the most accurate answer was about eight years. And in fact, over this winter, I've done quite a lot of uh, reworking and new writing into it. Mm. Because as I've, as we've discovered more resources and learned more, I, I wanted to extend Isabel's story, I wanted to give it a little bit more. So I've, it's still the same length, but I've 
I suppose tightened it up really. I've also worked with the director, uh, Miller Jackson, who's been great in terms of, of, of really helping me to, to focus and get, get the story strong uh, and not waste a minute really. You mentioned last time, didn't you, that um, you've, you've got certain pieces that as you move around, you, you pay more attention to the things of that area. Ah, that's a very good question. Good point. Yeah, one of the things we wanted to do this summer, having started to work together last year, and we did a short tour uh, on the Staffs in Worcester and up the Shroppy of, uh, it was going to be 11 shows. Unfortunately, the River Seven got to the first one before we didn't, flooded the garden. So we, uh, we had to postpone that one. So we did a, this short run in the summer and that tested it out and it worked very well. And then we were being asked about shows for the autumn. So we started to book other things. And in the middle of all that came the idea of this summer, which is to recreate the journey that the women worked. They had a, those who worked for the Grand Union Company had a route from, the depot was out in West London at Bulls Bridge. They would go down to Limehouse, past us here, Kingston Basin, load, then up to Birmingham where they offloaded, over to Coventry for coal, back to London. So that's the route we're going to follow. And of course we're taking, in, unlike last year when we were further over to the west, we're actually taking the stories along the route they happened. So we have this idea about bringing the history on your doorstep to your door. And we are looking and been developing, and I think we're pretty much there, that in each area we will have something about that area. It might be a particular piece. <clears throat> Some of the play obviously has got local references anyway. Some of it um, might be just sharing a little bit of a story in the introduction about what happened in that particular area. But yeah, that's that's the idea is to is to make it, make people think, oh, that happened here. How interesting. So when is it that you're doing this tour over the summer? We start at the end of April. We start at the 20, on the 22nd of April out at Bulls Bridge with um, a bit of a launch. We thought we'd have a glass or something and cut a ribbon. Lovely. Quite informal. Lunchtime on, on the 22nd. And then the um, <coughs> sorry, the shows at proper start on Monday the 24th at the Cruising Association in Limehouse. And then we work our way back across um, and up and round and end up back at the Pirate Castle in Camden on the 5th of August. Now the, the route, that journey took the women three weeks. So we're spending three, well we were going to do three months, it seems to have turned into three and a half months to, uh, to do the same thing. And, and we could probably take even longer actually because there's, there's so many places along the route we could take it to, but that seemed realistic. And the reason for ending up back in Camden is that when they uh, were loaded with coal you, from the Coventry coal fields, they delivered to a number of places, but in particular the paper mill uh, in Apsley. So we're going to Frogmore Paper Mill with, with some coal, we hope. And the other place was the ABC Bakery in Camden. Uh, so that isn't there anymore, but the Pirate Castle is. So the Pirate Castle is going to stand in for the bakery. Uh, but that was that often was their, their final place. And then they'd go back to the depot, uh, sort the boats out. They might start another trip. They might have a week's leave. Lovely. Um, so who's actually going to be involved in your trip? Well, it's growing. Last year it was quite simple. It was me and Heather and my boat. And that was it, really. We sort of muddled our way along with a bit of help here and there. This year is a much, much bigger project. Uh, we're very fortunate in that we were successful in getting um, a grant from the Arts Council. So we're able to have a tour manager, Zoe Hun, who is a boater and a very experienced production manager. We're working with a historic boat, Tench, which is owned by a woman, Alex Bennett, and will be skippered by her or by another very experienced boat woman, Heather Boyce. So we've, and we're planning on um, having crew on the boat, so it's an opportunity for women to come and join us for a day or so to get some experience of what it's like to be on a, on a working boat, or for some day, experience to be on a boat at all. So we're going to be doing the journey with two boats, hopefully a crew of three uh, or four people each day, but of course Heather and I can manage both boats if we need to. Um, and we'll have uh, Zoe, our tour manager, will be coming along for bits of it, and other people will be helping out. So it's going to be um, it's a lot of organising, 
and it's going to be a bit of a grand procession rather in the, it's about the same sort of speed that kind of Elizabethan you know Queen Elizabeth um, what was it called when they went on um, uh, on the Jubilee Parade thing no I'm thinking of the um, uh, much earlier sort of 15th 16th century oh. kings and queens they, they would make a, a journey through the country and it was a, a huge undertaking because hundreds of people went and thousands of tents and kit and and, and you know, it had to be exactly, exactly the right thing. And I think landowners and the aristocracy would bankrupt themselves in the process of hosting the Queen Elizabeth <laughs> and, and her entourage. So we're not quite that big, but it's getting a bit like that. It's a bit like a grand procession. What kinds of venues have you performed in? What kind of weird and wonderful venues? And um, yeah. We've got some wonderful ones this year. Last year, we did quite a lot of pub gardens. Uh, including some really iconic spots like the, the Anchor at High Offaly, which is a tiny little pub in the middle of nowhere and you wouldn't think anybody would ever go to. But people travel miles to because it is so special. It's been in the same family for over 100 years. So that was a, that's a very nice one. And uh, a land, a sort of a rather interesting kind of loading bay outside the, the shoppy fly in Audlem. We went to the bonded warehouse in Stourbridge, which is a wonderful historic building that was rescued and saved by a campaigning group that included Heather's father. He was very involved in campaigning for the staffs of Worcester. This year we are going to the Ragged School Museum in Mile End, the Canal Museum in King's Cross, which is also the Ice House, a farm out in Perivale, a wood in Leamington, Pump House in Titford, Wolverhampton, Lots of pub gardens. We're going to do it lockside um, at Batchworth Locks in Rickmansworth. And the Rickmansworth Waterways Trust are putting their historic boat into the second lock, so there's a parallel lock there, as, as a backdrop. Oh, that would be nice. So we'll have Tench, our boat, moored there for people to have a look at. And we'll have their boat in the lock. And I'm hoping I can actually use it as a prop <laughs> or set that I can actually get on. But we'll have to see how that, that works out. But yeah, so we're doing that outdoor at lockside very lovely well if you'd like to see Kate uh, and in her show I'm going to put the details in of her website in the description below um, alarumtheatre.co.uk was it that's it and um, so if you need a spelling I'll put that down below um, and I'm also going to pop some other links to interesting books that Kate mentioned in the last video and a link to that video down there as well um, Hopefully, if you live anywhere on the Grand Union, mm. you'll be able to uh, come, and see come and see the show. And if you've got any stories you'd like to add, you know, stories from your family or your own particular memories of the, the towpath during the war or after the war, because we're quite interested in beginning to look at that, that next stage. Because after the war, there was a real um, decline. The canals were bought up, were nationalised alongside the railways and very near, most of them very nearly got filled in. In fact, some did. And we're interested now in looking at some of that campaigning and those stories from after the war because those are going to disappear soon. Mm. So if you uh, know any stories or have any family stories, let me know in the comments and I will pass them on to Kate. Or if you go onto her website, I'm sure there's an email address on there. There is. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please join us again on this narrowboat adventure by clicking subscribe. Um, and thank you very much if you support us with any comments or likes, or if you choose to donate on my Patreon. Thank you. Have a great day. And yeah, join us again. Bye. Thank you.